Hi everybody, just a quick video today to look at a tool that's going to help us slice and dice our model, or more importantly maybe our model geometry, such that we can break it into pieces or maybe isolate it so that we can share it with somebody else if we don't want to share the entire contents of our file. So as an example, I've got a file here, uh, while it was created in Civil 3D, I've gone through the process of exporting it to AutoCAD so that uh, all of the objects that I'm dealing with would be native AutoCAD objects, you know, blocks, lines, polylines, things like that, so that I can, you know, crop a portion of it that maybe I'm interested in sending somebody a piece of the model uh, or the geometry, but not necessarily all of the model, and I'm looking for a quick way to do that. Historically, maybe we'd create a boundary and then try and trim and things like that. Much faster way within Civil 3D for us to do this. So, first thing, I create a model like what I've got here. It's just... Uh, the geometry reduced down to AutoCAD entities because then there'll be things that we can automatically trim. I'm going to create a boundary. Let's just up the level of difficulty here. I'll type in the command circle and let's say that I just want to maintain the geometry that falls inside the inside of, inside of the radius of the circle here. All right, once again, if we were to do this manually, we'd be doing trim and selecting the objects with a fence and a much better way to do it. So the command that we're going to use is called map trim. All right, so I'm going to type that into the command line. We'll type in map trim using the autocomplete. It'll go through and find that for us, but we'll say map trim. What it's going to do is it's going to ask us to either select or define a boundary. So if I were to define it, I've got some options with a polygon or a rectangle. Instead, in this case, we'll do select boundary so we can select the circle that we made. I'll select that. Next, as far as the objects to trim, I can select them manually. Maybe I, I don't want this to be a total uh, you know, wipe out of the information around the outside, but just manually select things, maybe the contours or something like that. In this case, we'll say automatically. And then even though it's automatic, I can still go through the process of filtering some of that information and maybe only performing the trim operation on things that are on specific layers. All right, in this case, we're not going to filter it. We'll leave the asterisk in there as the wildcard, meaning trim everything. So uh, we'll tell it we'd like to either trim inside or outside the boundary. If we trim outside the boundary, that makes, uh, you know, isolates the area we're looking at. Inside can be really good if we want to blank a particular area so that we can inset other information or something like that, but that's where we would use either case there. We've got skip topology objects and retain object data. Those are both map specific things. So in my case, I don't have any topology objects in here, so whether it's checked or not, it's not going to matter. Retaining object data is basically telling the system that if I had a map object or uh, essentially attribute, uh, geospatial attribute information, if I trim the object, would I like to retain it? Sometimes if the uh, attribution is, is a length or something like that, if we trim the object, it's no longer valid. So it gives us the ability to check or uncheck that. In my case, neither of those are applicable, so whether they're checked or not, it won't matter. The last thing is what to do with the objects that cannot be trimmed. Uh, in other words, I can't trim text. Uh, I can't trim like a civil 3D object. I can't trim uh, a block, uh, at least not with this command. I can trim it with other commands. But uh, those things that it encounters, what do you want to do? We can ignore them. We can delete those objects altogether. Or we can reference the insertion point. So in other words, if the text maybe falls, as an example, the insertion point of the text falls inside the circle or our, our boundary, it will uh, keep it. If it falls outside, it will remove it, so we can add a little bit of an intelligence there. In my case, we'll say ignore. If it encounters something it doesn't know what to deal with, I can maybe go back and resolve it on my own. So we'll click on OK. And uh, warning, objects outside the trim boundary that are not frozen or on locked layers, so this will also impact layers that are off. Uh, those things will be trimmed as well. So very important to keep that in mind. Frozen or locked is the way that we would isolate them, that they would not be impacted, but layers that are off would be impacted. So we'll go ahead and hit yes. And in a much shorter time than it took me to explain it, it automatically went through, trimmed all of that information from here out to infinity. So it has reduced my drawing file now to uh, just the information that um, shows up or the geometry that shows up with inside that circle. All right, if I did have any geometry on layers that were off, let's go ahead and turn all layers on. We see that uh, there were some triangles in there. They're actually 3D faces. So they're examples of things that could not be trimmed. So because those could not be trimmed, they, uh, you know, we get par portions of the triangles, but you can see that it impacted even those layers that were off. Let's undo. I don't need 
those. The other thing is here, I think I've had a couple layers that were frozen, so I'll go ahead and thaw those layers. You see when I thaw that, that those objects were totally uh, unimpacted at all by the fact that we did this. Okay, so map trim, fantastic command for us to uh, isolate a particular area and eradicate all geometry either inside or outside of that boundary. It can help us a number of different ways, either if we want to break some geometry up into pieces, maybe we want to share a portion of a model or a portion of the geometry and not all of it. it gives us a quick way to do that. The fact that it'll also impact layers in that that are off. We don't have to be turning things on and off to uh, make sure that we get all that's required. Uh, however, we still have the ability that we can leverage lock and freeze if there is some geometry that we would like to uh, uh, eliminate from being considered in that trimming process. So hope this is helpful, and I look forward to talking to you again soon. See ya.